Okay, so next question we're going to look at is uh, some sketching of the graphs. Here we go, sketch the curve f of x equals 1 plus 3 sine 2x, and that's all absolute between 0 and pi, and it's given us uh, the graph here. Um, okay, so the, probably the, the best way to do this is to kind of break it down into stages. Um, maybe do a little sketch here, uh, and let's first off sketch y equals uh, 3 sine 2x. Well, if it's 3 sine 2x, um, it's going to go between 3 and minus 3, and the 2x here is going to squash up the graph kind of uh, twice as much, so that therefore um, it's going to go up and down and back to start again, and that will be pi, because uh, a normal period would be 2 pi, so it's been squashed to, to give you pi. Okay, so that's my first step. So I've got I've got the graph there of three sine two x. Um, the next thing to do is is do the next bit, which is going to be y equals three sine two x plus one. Well, that's just going to push everything up by one. So it's going to start at one. It's going to go up to four. It's going to go down to two. And it's going to go like that. So that's going to be minus two. Uh, that's going to be four and pi. It's still going to be the point where it ends like that. Okay, so that's 3 sine 2x plus 1. Uh, the last thing to look at is, well, therefore, if it's absolute, that means basically all the negative part is just going to be reflected in the x-axis. So y equals uh, 3 sine 2x plus 1 all in absolute is going to give us this here. This bit all is going to stay the same. That all stays the same. But then this bit here gets reflected like that, and then we've still got the bit that's left over. The bit that's left over like that. Okay, and, uh, and as before, it's going to finish uh, at the point of pi. Um, okay, and then all we need to do now, well, we'll just mark on the points there. Um, uh, the key points there, we'd have to find the, the two zeros for this point and this point. Well, we can find the two zeros just by solving f of x, so we could just solve that equal to zero. So we've got zero equals one plus three sine two x, which is therefore going to give us minus one over three equals sine two x. So sine minus one minus one over three equals two x. And at this point here, we therefore need to find the second value. Remember. When we're using sine, we've got two answers, one answer's here and the other answer's here. So we're going to solve this, get one solution. The second solution is going to be pi, take away this answer. And then we uh, rearrange to find out what x equals. Um, if we do that, we should get two answers for x. So x equals uh, 1.7 something, 1.7, and the other answer is 2. 9, 7. Okay, so we have two possible answers for that. Um, and for the second part, um, it says by adding one suitable line to your sketch, find the number of solutions to the equation pi f of x equals 4 pi minus uh, x. Well, if I rearrange that, I'm going to get f of x equals 4 uh, pi minus x. Of a pi. So basically, if I plot this straight line here, uh, and then I can see how many times it intersects with the graph that I've got, well, I can plot this quite easily. I know that when um, x equals pi, then this is going to equal zero. So y equals naught. So that's one point on my my straight line. Um, and when uh, x equals zero. Um, I'm going to end up with y equals 4. Okay, so there we go. That gives me the straight line that I can plot. Uh, if I do plot that, if I plot that through uh, the graph that I've, I've drawn here, I will actually find that there are five solutions. Okay, so I'm just going to plot the, the straight line. And I should end up with five solutions to that. Okay, next question. Question number two uh, says, consider the function uh, of f where f of x equals arc sine of ln x and find the domain. 
that's the, the values of x that it can take. Um, first thing to know for this is um, what the, the graph of arc sine looks like. Arc sine looks something like this, where we've got values of between minus 1 and 1. Okay, so um, we've basically got a domain for arc sine for being between minus 1 and 1. So therefore, um, we must have ln x uh, between 1 and minus 1. Okay, because arc sine can only be between those two values. Okay, so there we before we get uh, ln x between minus 1 and 1. Uh, then if we e all the sides, we're going to get e to the minus 1. That's x less than equal to e to the 1. Okay, and there we go. So that's our domain for f. Um, find the inverse. Okay, well, first off, what I've got, I've got y equals arc sine ln x. That is the same as, if I basically sign both sides, sine y equals uh, ln x. So all I've done is just, in effect, rearrange that. I've not, not done anything else to it yet. Um, I can now uh, swap the values of x and y because I'm finding an inverse. So therefore, sine x equals uh, ln y. And all I've got to do now is get rid of the ln. Well, if I e both sides, I'll get e sine x equals y. Okay, and there we go. That's, that's the uh, uh, inverse function. Okay, so next question. Um, we've got a graph which is transformed into, so ln x is transformed into y equals ln uh, 2x plus 1. The, the two transformations that are required to do that. First off, we can look at this thing here. Well, if we change x into 2x, um, that's, that can be described as a stretch uh, scale factor of a half parallel to the x axis. Basically, it kind of it's it's um, I guess in a way it's kind of uh, squashing up, squashing up the uh, the function. Um, and then once I've got the, the stretch parallel to the x-axis, well, the next thing here, if I if I add one here, it's the same as a, a translation by uh, translation of uh, in effect, uh, minus one, zero. So it translates, it shifts the, the graph along uh, by this vector here, minus one, zero. Okay, that's that question. Okay, and then question number four uh, A is greater than zero. Draw the graph of y equals absolute value of x minus a over two for between minus a and a on the graph below. So let's, uh, let's draw a rough kind of axis here. Uh, first thing to work out for this is well, what value is going to make it 0 when x is a over 2 and y is going to be 0. So let's mark that on here. So this here is going to be a over 2. Uh, the next one to work out is, is the end point. So when x is a, well, a take away o, a over 2 is going to be a over 2. So when x is a, I'm going to get point a over 2. So when x is a, we get a y value of a over 2. Um, and I can just join up these points like this with a straight line. Uh, the next one to look at, well, let's have a look at the other end point. So when x is minus a, minus a minus a over 2 is going to be minus 1.5a. But the absolute value makes it positive, so that's going to be positive 1.5a. Um, so following the same scale as before, it's going to be 
minus a t minus three a over two. And that's going to be three a over two. And um, so for when it's minus a, I'm going to get this point here. Again, I'll join that like that. Uh, that is my final graph.